Good morning as people are joining us on this, at least it's snowy here in Virginia. I don't know what it's doing in Maryland because I am home. I am leading worship from my house. I'm taking advantage of Zoom Church on a snowy morning. So here we are. Welcome to my dining room. Okay. And as we are waiting for our service to start, I encourage you, invite you to just take a moment to reflect on Sue Carroll's beautiful liturgical art. I have to say, this is one of my favorite pieces that she's done for us. Just stunning. And it's even more beautiful in person, and it's hanging in the church. So come on by the church, and you can see it um, in our nave gallery. Um, it is really exquisite. Patty, I think you may be muted. Yeah, but I am intentionally. Yep. So, excuse me. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our off-site worship this morning. I am leading worship from my home, given the snow and given the fact that we are on Zoom and Facebook. I decided to take advantage of the opportunity to stay safe uh, in my house. So it is wonderful to see people clicking onto Facebook right to Zoom right now. Excuse me. And we hope that folks are joining us on Facebook as well. Just a reminder, as you do come on to Zoom, I have you muted as you enter. Please remain muted as uh, we begin our prelude music so that we can hear Diane and Joey's beautiful contribution to our worship without uh, static or feedback or inadvertent conversation. So at this time, I invite you just to sit and reflect on Sue Carroll's beautiful art and listen to our lovely prelude piece, Deep River.
both. Thank you, Diane and Joey. That was absolutely beautiful. For those who may not have noticed, during February, during Black History Month, Diane and Joey are featuring some just stunning African-American spirituals. And this was yet another one. So we are deeply grateful for your sharing your gifts with us today. Good morning, everyone. If I haven't had an opportunity to greet you before, I am, of course, leading our service today from my dining room. I'm taking advantage of the opportunity to stay home while it is snowing. I hope that where you are, you are warm and safe and are able to participate fully in our service today. Two reminders, as always, that if you are worshiping with us here on Zoom, we ask that you remain muted unless and until you are reading a lesson or leading prayers or uh, contributing music to the service. That way we avoid feedback and you wind up, uh, and, and that way you do not wind up doing a duet with Diane. If you are worshiping with us on Facebook, please let us know that you are here. You can do that by saying hello in the comment box. You can click like. You can share the piece at the appropriate moment. You can offer a prayer concern, but it means a lot to the rest of us to know that you are here and sharing in worship together, even though at a distance. Finally, uh, just a reminder that we encourage you, please, to join in singing at home. Uh, the words to all of our hymns are projected on the screen. Again, please remain muted. And also, as we move through the service, the congregation's responses are printed in bold. Deacon Mary Seabold will read those responses on behalf of all of us, and we encourage you to follow along and participate actively from where you are. Let us continue. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to pray together with me, Almighty God. To you, all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, we pray.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be Thanks to be God. To God. Marcia will now lead us in Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Holy One, and they meditate on that law day and night. They are like the trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff, which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when the judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Holy One knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed.
Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus came down with the 12 apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when, you, when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Okay, let's make this a little bigger. No doubt you've heard the old Native American parable told by a grandfather to his granddaughter. Sometimes it's a grandson, but we'll say it's a granddaughter today. The grandfather describes a battle going on inside him, a fight between two wolves. One wolf, he says, demonstrates noble characteristics, joy, humility, peace, love, hope, benevolence, generosity, faith, compassion. By contrast, the other wolf embodies envy, arrogance, greed, guilt, inferiority, anger, resentment, and self-pity. When her grandfather finishes speaking, the little girl asks him, Grandfather, which wolf is winning? And he replies, the one I feed. I like this simple story because it speaks to a fundamental truth about what it means to be human. Each of us possesses laudable qualities, good qualities, qualities of which we can be proud. Qualities that reveal even just a glimmer of God to a hurting and troubled world. It may not always be easy to identify those characteristics in ourselves, but I find that we generally can spot them pretty easily in those we love. Kindness, compassion, gentleness, strength, the ability to forgive, the ability to laugh. But Lord knows that we all possess less attractive qualities as well. And while we may not always want to identify them in ourselves, it's often not difficult to spot those negative attributes in folks around us. Spend enough time with virtually any group of people and before long, you will see the inevitable phenomenon the criticisms, the gossiping, the arguing. Let's face it, people get on each other's nerves. It happens. It happens in families, it happens among close friends, it happens at work, and it certainly happens in church. If you did not know that, let me be the first to share that with you. I bet you did though. The point is that humans are not purebreds either purely good or purely evil. We're all mutts, mixed breeds, if you will, harboring both sickness and health, bad and good within our hearts. 
As we heard the prophet Jeremiah declare this morning, the heart is devious above all else. It's perverse. Who can understand it? Isn't that the truth? None of us is perfect. Our hearts wander. Our resolve weakens. We lose sight of the vision, of God's vision for us. None of us is fully the person we are intended to be. But as this parable reminds us, we have a choice. We can choose to feed, to cultivate the positive aspects of our humanity, or we can choose to feed or cultivate the negative. Or framed within the context of the Christian tradition, we can choose to feed those things that draw us closer and closer to God, or we can choose to feed those things that try to take us away from God, that stand between us and feeling, experiencing the love of God. What does that look like in actual practice? Our readings this morning provide some clues. They paint two very clear pictures of two very different wolves. The first wolf is a life without God, a life of self-sufficiency. Jeremiah says, cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. Many of us, I am sure, struggle with this beast. Despite our best intentions, it is so easy to be seduced by the values of the world around us. We are consumers, by and large. We have been nurtured in an environment in which money and influence are supposed to be the tickets to a happy life. But this is a slippery slope, isn't it? Before we know it, we may find ourselves so caught up in competition and status and power and stuff that we forget who we are and whose we are. It doesn't take long before we begin to define our worth in terms of how successful we are, or how much money we make, or how much others respect or admire or fear us. We clergy do that all the time as well. We define our worth by the size of our parish, by the size of our budget, by our, annual, our average Sunday attendance. But when this happens, when we begin to define ourselves according to those extrinsic metrics, we are no longer the consumers. Then we are consumed with the impressions and the opinions of others. Placing our trust in things human is a lose-lose proposition. If we're successful in worldly terms, we, we risk losing sight of our source, of the very ground of our being. If we're unsuccessful in worldly terms, we risk losing sight of our intrinsic value as beloved children of God, an identity that nothing can take away from us, but we may fail to see. Jesus echoes this warning in his sermon on the plain, not the mount, the plain, in Luke's gospel where he pronounces his blessings and woes. This is a difference from Matthew. Matthew is, says, blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek. In Luke, Jesus gives us blessings and woes. And what does he say? He says, woe to you who are rich. He doesn't say woe to the rich. He says, woe to you who are rich. It's very personal. Woe to you who are abund abundantly supplied. That's what the Greek means. For you have received your consolation. I want to be clear. Jesus is not condemning wealth per se here, but he is issuing a wake-up call. He says, beware of self-sufficiency. Beware of complacency. Beware of too much comfort. Beware the wolf in sheep's clothing, so to speak, to keep pressing that metaphor. Because before long, you may well find yourself feeding a wild beast that will grow and will take on a life of its own, a life out of your control. 
Be alert, he says. Be intentional. Pay attention to the choices you make. Jesus certainly doesn't ask for perfection. We know this. But he does invite us to consciousness, to awareness. Jesus challenges us to examine our lives and ask the really difficult questions, the questions we usually don't want to consider. For example, do I seek God's kingdom or my own kingdom? In my day-to-day -day interactions, do I try to build up other people or do I puff myself up at others' expense? Am I compassionate and forgiving? Or might I be hard-hearted and resentful? The good news, there's always good news. Gospel is good news. The good news is that there is another wolf. That other wolf is life nurtured and nourished by God. It is a life marked by vulnerability and by surrender. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord, Jeremiah reminds us. They are like trees planted by the water, like willows, perhaps, that send out deep and extensive roots that they may drink freely and luxuriantly. Willows are amazing because if they cannot find adequate water nearby, they stretch their roots out as far as necessary until they find nourishment. They don't settle for the shallow, for the insufficient supply. Imagine living your life that way. Rather than succumbing to immediate temptations and quick fixes, imagine holding out, stretching out for something better that God has in store for us. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we can find ourselves acting impulsively, grabbing at an expedient short-term solution to a larger, longer-term problem. Perhaps we cut corners to land a deal or get ahead professionally. Perhaps we lash out at others instinctively when we are hurt, like an injured animal backed into a corner. Perhaps we walk away from relationships when things get too painful or messy or complicated or when we are not fulfilled right away. There are lots of possible manifestations, but it seems to me that they are all symptomatic of one underlying malady, and that is dissatisfaction, dis Ease. The word disease literally means dis-ease with a hyphen there. Enough is never enough. And that in turn can lead to some unattractive, perhaps even addictive attitudes and behaviors. You may remember the old song by the Irish rock band U2. Bono sings, I have climbed highest mountains. I have run through the fields, I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled city walls, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. If there is any common human condition, isn't that it? I still haven't found what I'm looking for. The great Christian theologian C.S. Lewis also addresses this essential human dissatisfaction in his book, Till We Have Faces. He writes, it was when I was happiest that I longed most. It was on happy days when we were up on the hills with the wind and the sunshine, the color and the smell. Because it was so beautiful, it set me longing, always longing. Somewhere else there must be more of it. We know that endless longing, don't we? The object of our desire may vary from person to person, but the underlying appetite remains, and it is insatiable. My friends, we are invited to feed a different wolf. 
Our tradition teaches that our best hope for true satisfaction, for lasting fulfillment, is to remember who we are and whose we are. St. Augustine famously wrote that our hearts are restless until they rest in God. They will never be not restless until they rest in God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, we sang a few moments ago. Our best hope is to strive for a life marked by joy, humility, peace, love, hope, benevolence, generosity, faith, and compassion. But the challenge, of course, is to cultivate these kingdom qualities when so many voices around us scream at us to put ourselves first, to jump at the things that feel good right now. Nurturing this second wolf, this life of dependence on God, is much more demanding work. And this is where Christian community plays such a pivotal role. Christian community is challenging too, no question about that. We criticize, we gossip, we argue, welcome to the church, welcome to the human race. We humans hurt each other, we step on each other, we sometimes climb over each other. But at the same time, it is precisely in this community, in this laboratory, in our relationships with one another, that we learn to grow more and more into the people we are created and called by God to be, if we are willing to do that work. So, which wolf is winning in your heart? Which wolf are you feeding right now? We need to ask ourselves these questions constantly because at any given moment, one wolf or the other may be victorious, depending on how strong we're feeling, how much support we have, how much sleep we've had, and whether or not we are feeling loved and upheld by God and by one another. We're all mutts, neither purely good nor purely evil. And it usually takes a village, or in our case, a Christian community, to help us to be our better selves, to cultivate the qualities of God's kingdom and not our own. Ask yourself, what am I looking for? What am I longing for, really? And how can I find it? Where can I find it? Which wolf should I feed? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our service continues now with an affirmation of faith. And during this Epiphany Tide for a couple more weeks, we are using the words of our brothers and sisters in the Anglican Church in New Zealand. So I invite you to join me as we say together, you, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Our service continues now with the prayers of the people. I invite you to remain muted initially and follow along with the responses at home. At the end of the prayers, we will have an opportunity to unmute and share our prayers of petition and intercession and thanksgiving with one another. Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. 
that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Marianne, our bishop, and for all bishops, priests, deacons, and lay ministers. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We remember the president and vice president, the members of Congress and the Supreme Court, and all those called to serve the common good. We ask your blessing on the men and women of our nation's foreign service and armed forces, and we pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. We remember those who have been commended to our prayers. Joyce, Wesley, Sydney, Connie, Phil, Chuck and Jackie, Paula, Bill, Kenny, Maddie, Warren, Michael, Ben, Todd, Joyce, Christine, Carol, Gabby, Ann, Kurt, Lena, Don, Liz, Charlie and Sheila, Ann, B, Bob, Carmen, Caroline, Elmo, Catherine, Linda, Nancy, Ray, and the Vivanco family. We continue to pray for all affected by COVID in body, mind, or spirit, as well as those impacted by natural disasters, war, or threats of war, and gun violence. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. We pray for those who have died, remembering especially those who lost their lives in service to our country this week. Navy Seaman Kyle Mullen, Marine Lance Corporal Bailey Spencer Hoover, and Marine Corporal Victor Vera, Varela Martinez. Give to all the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those, of, oh, and those of others, either privately in our hearts or out loud. Dear God, we pray for peace in Ukraine as tensions continue to mount there. We pray for all who are in harm's way potentially we pray for those who are trying to leave the country and we ask that saner heads prevail and that violence might be avoided We pray as well for our country in this time of inflation and economic hardship. We ask you, dear God, to move us, to guide our minds and hearts, that we might reach out to those in need, that we might find appropriate and sustainable ways to share the, the bounty you have given with us given to us with those who do not have it. Are there other prayers today? <coughs> Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God. God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. 
we repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My sisters and brothers, if you are worshiping with us on Zoom, I invite you to unmute momentarily as we share the peace. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also, and also, with, you. also with you. You would peace take be with a moment you. to say hello to one another and to share Christ's peace. peace. Once you have that opportunity, please do peace. mute yourself again. I can mute everybody and I'll just ask Mary to unmute herself as we continue now with our service of spiritual communion, as we continue with the great thanksgiving, trusting in Jesus' promise that where two or three are gathered together in his name, he is very present with and among us. Even though we are separated physically, we are bound together by our shared love of God and one another. And so we trust that Jesus is, in fact, here with us. Let me just make sure that we are all muted. And Deacon Mary, I invite you to unmute. And we continue. All things come from you, O God. And from your own hand have we given you. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only son to be our savior. Incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, he lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners of freedom, to the sorrowful joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. 
when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy and Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, with St. Dunstan, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. And now. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. My friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, holy gifts for holy people. I invite you at home to join in praying together these words of spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with the earnest wish that I may always be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself with you and embrace you with all the love of my soul. Let nothing ever separate you from me. May I live in you and may you live in me, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Joy. 
restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people, forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. My friends, may Christ the Son of God be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world. In the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those you love, always. Amen. First, as has become our custom, as this service draws to a close, I invite those who are on Zoom to remain on Zoom for a little while for a time of coffee hour. Grab a cup of coffee, grab your breakfast, 
you don't have to stay for an hour, but please pop in or stay on the line so that we can have a chance to say hello and share some time of fellowship with one another. If you're worshiping on Facebook, this is a great opportunity to come on over to Zoom and say hi now. Here is my hope, my fervent hope and prayer that next Sunday, February 20th, we will be regathered in person in the church, weather, Wi-Fi, and COVID willing. We, if, if we have bad weather, then we know that this works just fine to continue to worship on Zoom. Likewise, if our Wi-Fi situation in the church isn't working, we will postpone our first uh, regathered surface to service by another week or so. And of course, we are always monitoring COVID numbers. But it is my dearest hope that we will be able to uh, worship together at St. Dunstan's next Sunday. So please watch the newsletter and just um, stay tuned as we have more information about that. You may have seen in our newsletters this week that we have posted the position description for our parish administrator. This is a part-time 20 hour a week position with some flexibility in hours, depending upon the person's schedule. If it's a parent who has to work around a child's school schedule, for example, there's some flexibility there. The one day a week where we really need someone in the office is on my day off, which is generally on Fridays. So we are not uh, entertaining applications from parishioners. That said, if you know of somebody or if you are connected to networks where you can send out the position description, I really want to uh, use word of mouth. I think that's the best way to find the right person. But we are committed to that, to finding the right person. And if it means we have to wait a little while for that person to reveal him or herself to us, then so be it. Uh, but I really do ask your help and ask your prayers as we move forward, because this is an important position to fill, and we want to call the right person whom God is lifting up to join our fellowship and to support our ministries joyfully. I also hope that you have seen that two weeks from today, February 27th, will be the annual meeting of our parish. This is the time at which we Thank and bid farewell to those who are rotating off the vestry who have served so faithfully, especially those who have been on the vestry these past couple of years. They have gotten way more than they anticipated and they have just been a fabulous and strong uh, lay leadership body. So we wanna thank our vestry members. I will give a brief address, sort of setting my vision for the coming months. Of course, we plan and God laughs, so I can say what I'm intending, but then who knows what will happen. We will also hear, we will also receive committee reports in written form and hear uh, verbally from some members of our lay leadership. If I have reached out to you this past week to submit a ministry report, please remember that the deadline for that is not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. However, if you have it finished sooner than that, I will take it because I'm now the editor of the annual report and I can promise it will not be as pretty as what Kim Matthews would have done. Uh, and it takes me, it just takes me longer to do things. So that's sort of a drop dead deadline of February 21st because I will need a couple of days to format everything and get the annual report out to you. We also, on, at the annual meeting, will be ratifying the 2022 budget. So that's an important conversation that we always have because a budget is an expression of ministry priorities. And so I encourage you once the annual report comes out to spend some time looking at our budget line items so that you can see how we are allocating the funds that you so generously have donated, have contributed to the parish's mission and ministry through your stewardship, through your pledges. Uh, and Joey Arkfeld, do you want to say anything about the Easter Choir? Yeah, so we had a lovely little rehearsal uh, this past Wednesday and did some singing together. Uh, we are planning on having our next uh, Easter Choir rehearsal the week after this, so the Wednesday following this week. And I would love to see more people there. Uh, don't be, again, I say this every time, but don't be afraid if you have no musical ability or 
um, maybe your music ability is several years in the past, you should still come. It's really fun to sing together. And uh, yeah, we'll be working towards that uh, nice Easter sing this April. So please come uh, the Wednesday after this will be the next one. And it's just 30 minutes at 730. So it doesn't take a lot out of your day. You can have a glass of wine after or before, <laughs> but only one if you do it before. I hope to see you there. So that is February 23rd, I believe, right? Yes, that sounds right. Sure. Uh, right. Yeah, Diane put that in the yeah. chat for us too. Wonderful. Yes. So we will make sure that that information gets in the newsletter. Are there any other announcements that need to be made for the good of the order? We want to announce the jazz concert. Yes, let's announce the jazz concert. Thank you. Joey, back over to you. You want to say something about the jazz concert? Yes, I'd love to. Um, so <laughs> we uh, we bumped our jazz concert from February 6th to March 6th, which is coming up so fast. Uh, Landon Paddock and I will be performing. Um, Landon is the singer who comes when I bring that when I've brought the jazz quartet for the uh, outside services, we're going to be doing a really uh, nice little set of some jazz standards and some old uh, music theater classics. And you might even hear a pop song or two <gasps> mixed into that. Um, but we're going to we're going to be uh, performing on March 6th, which is Sunday at 4 p.m. We'll be in the parish hall and uh, there will be some light refreshments at the break in the middle and uh, we, we up the ticket price to $25, uh, $10 for students, um, just to help cover the, the cost of hiring musicians and then downsize the band. We're really, we're really hoping to get the word out so that we can keep doing this. So I ask anyone who's thinking about coming, think about bringing a friend, bringing someone from your family who hasn't seen it before, someone who likes live music, because these concerts are you know, they're a real good thing to do for the community and we want to, we want to keep them going. So let's, let's have a big turnout this time. Thank you, Joey. Uh, and I'll just add, cause he won't say it, but the quality of the music is always outstanding and he won't say it because he is performing this time, but please, uh, absolutely. This is a great community moment. It is a gift to uh, our larger neighborhood and it's leveraging our identity as a parish. We, you know, it, it's becoming increasingly clear to me how important the arts, both the performing and the visual arts are to St. Dunstan's and it's who we are. And we need to share that gift of beauty with a world that is marked by a lot of ugliness these days. So um, thank you, Joey, and thank you for your uh, steering committee who's working hard with you to prepare us for these wonderful concerts. Are there any other announcements? Okay. I wish everybody a good Super Bowl Sunday and a happy Valentine's Day for those who will celebrate and just a wonderful, safe, warm rest of this day. Deacon Mary. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And thank you all for joining us in worship today. I'm going to take us off of live stream now. So again, if you are worshiping on Facebook, please let us know you've been here. And please come on over to Zoom to say hello. Bye, everybody. <clears throat>